Hello everyone, my name is Ivo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. You know, last week I shared with you my recipe for focaccia and if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the description for you. But today folks, I'd like to share with you my recipe for what I call my country harvest bread. And this recipe folks takes so little effort, minimal effort, a little bit of time, great results. Let's get started right now. So step one is very, very quick and easy. We are going to start by adding 375 grams of, I've got all purpose white flour here. It's just actually unbleached, but any all purpose white flour will do. If you have best for bread, high protein flour, even better. Okay, but generally all purpose white is great, 375 grams. And by the way, folks, for those of you who are used to imperial as opposed to metric measurements, I will make sure that I have the imperial measurements noted in the recipe below for you. But uh, <laughs> for the recording purposes, I will be using metric. So we started off with 375 grams of white, all purpose white. I'm going to now add 25 grams of whole wheat flour. Okay, now we're gonna add 50 grams of rye flour. And to that, we're gonna take one quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast or instant yeast. Quarter teaspoon goes in. We're gonna add one and one half teaspoons of all-purpose table salt. Any fine salt will do. Optional, but very much preferred because this is the superfood for yeast and that is the diastatic malt powder. I'm gonna take one teaspoon and add one teaspoon of diastatic malt powder. And quite simply, we just take those ingredients and mix them all together. Okay, that's done. And now what we're gonna do is I have here some beautiful sourdough starter. And I've got 200 grams of sourdough starter, which we are going to add to our flour. Now, if you do not have sourdough starter, I have a video that shows you how easy it is to make and maintain your own sourdough starter. Um, so I will put a link in the description for you so that if you need to, you could check that out as well. Okay, so our sourdough starter has been added. Last ingredient is water. And here I have, folks, 280 grams of warm water. Warm meaning 80 degree Fahrenheit. And to get to 80 degrees, I popped it in the microwave for 20 seconds on high, and that's perfect. Now, with all our ingredients in there, again, so simple, mix everything together. I like to use a spatula to get things started, but we're gonna have to get in there with our hands and get things mixed up and incorporated very, very nicely. So start off by mixing. If you don't have a spatula, you could use a wooden spoon or you can just get right in there with your hands right away. It, it, either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's basically, I've got it started. So now it's time to get in there with my hands and what you're gonna to wanna to do here is mix these together for, oh, about three minutes. It takes about three minutes of mixing. And I like to just damp my hand, a little bit of water with a damp hand to begin with, and then take your dough and just in your hand, squeeze your dough. Just squeeze it, squeeze it to mix it. See the, the loose flour here down below? Grab that loose flour and incorporate it and just move the dough around and just keep mixing until all that flour is incorporated. You shouldn't be left with any dry flour at all. So you can see there's some dry flour there inside on the bottom, no problem. We just keep working the dough around and absorbing it. Okay, we get to the point where all the flour has been absorbed. Okay, there's no more really loose dry flour in our container anymore. And our dough is sticking to our hand. 
And again, all you're going to want to do, it's called the pincher method. You're basically grabbing the dough and squeezing it. Grab it and squeeze it. Okay? Lift it up, fold it over, grab it, squeeze it, work your way from one end to another. And keep this squeezing process going for about two to three minutes. Okay? So this is going to strengthen our dough and help get the glutens activated as well. So do this for about, like I say, two to three minutes. There, it's been about three minutes and I can tell because the dough has, it started to firm up a bit, but it also feels nice and smooth. So basically, that's the dough right there. Okay, so step one, almost done. And as you can see, very, very little effort so far. So I'm just going to scrape the edges. Okay, and take the dough off my hands. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and now, quite simply, I just, like I said, scrape the edges of the bowl and I just kind of form the dough just to keep it all together. There we go. Makes me feel better when the dough looks better. There we go. We have a nice dough ready to be aged. And speaking of aging, all we do at this point is put a lid on it and we are going to cover it. And it, folks, can sit now for 12 hours. Minimum 12 hours. 12 hours is preferred. Maximum of 14 hours. But we're going to let it sit for 12 hours. And as such, that's why I like to start with step one the night before it's just easier that way so we're going to fast forward let it sit and we'll see you in 12 hours actually before i sign off let's just take a quick look at the level of our dough where it is in the container and then we'll see what level we've got 12 hours from now so you can see basically where our dough is right now and we'll come back like i say in 12 hours so fast forward 12 hours Let's take a look at our dough and oh my goodness, folks, check that out. It has risen quite nicely. It's at the just, just a touch over the two liter mark there. It has doubled in size easily and we've got a beautiful, nice texture to our dough. So you know how quick and easy step one was while well, step two is even quicker and easier. We start by taking a little bit of whole wheat flour and just sprinkling some on the surface here. Okay, and then with our dough, I like to use a spatula. We're going to remove it from our container nice and easily. Just kind of scrape the edges, scrape it around. And let's get it out of the tub and onto our floured surface. Okay, just work your way around. You can do this by hand too. I mean, the spatula though really, really makes it easy. There we go. Very nice. And we got a little bit of dough in here. Scrape that. Again, spatula gets all the dough out. There we go. Okay, now um, we're going to prepare our proofing basket. This is our bread bonnetone. Uh, if you do not have one, uh, you can use a plastic cutting board and just cover the bottom of the plastic cutting board with some whole wheat flour. But we're going to use this bread bonnetone and quite simply take the whole wheat flour. And I like to use whole wheat flour as opposed to white flour because the white flour absorbs a little bit easier than the whole wheat and I don't want that. I'm putting this flour in the bread bonnetone in my proofing basket in order to prevent the dough from sticking. That's really all we're doing here and you notice I'm tilting it on the edge so that it gets in all those little cracks and crevices 
and then in, down the middle nice healthy layer of there we go nice healthy layer of um, whole wheat flour so that's covered ready to go I'll just put that aside and with floured hands we're going to do a fourfold and this is going to be a true fourfold grab one end lift fold it over grab the other end lift it up fold it over gets a little sticky a little bit of flour on the hands grab the third side lift and fold and then the back side as well lift and fold so we've done our fourfold now what we're going to do folks is shape this into a round so again a little bit of flour on the hands and the easiest way to do this you may have seen me do this before is you basically are going to grab the dough and pull it towards you and it tightens up and starts to form a ball as you move it along so again a little bit of flour on the hands I'm going to put a little flour here if you can watch it on the camera as I roll it if you can see that flour how it kind of moves forward if you can envision it's just cupping its way in there and forming a ball there we go we've got I'm gonna say a medium tight ball right there a little bit of flour on the fingers rest our bed uh, bread in the basket and then a little bit of whole wheat flour on top that's it step number two is done all it has to do now it's going to see the oven it's going to rest for two hours so in two hours from now it will go in the oven so that means in an hour and a half we're going to preheat our oven to 475 degrees so right now we're covered we we'll start the meter ticking it's got to rest for two hours it's now time to preheat the oven you want to preheat the oven at least 30 minutes before the bread goes in and for that I've got a beautiful Dutch oven here that's going to go in the oven empty of course so in it goes and the oven goes on we're going to set that to 475 Fahrenheit there we go we're going to let that preheat for 30 minutes before we put our bread in with our preheat now done it's time for step three so oh look at our bread dough folks it has been waiting patiently for two hours and it is now ready for the oven let's get that dutch oven out of the oven right now and start baking okay out of the hot oven we come okay there we go very careful here of course that's very very hot so for this stage it's also very simple to do we're going to take our bread and then very gingerly just tilt it i like to tilt it on my hand and then just drop it into that hot dutch oven and now with the bread lame you can make any design you want i'm gonna go with a round theme today so i'm just gonna work my way around the dough with an incision about a quarter inch deep there we go and you know what maybe we'll do another one an inner circle as well now this is going to help with the rise of the bread and it's also going to add some character to our loaf of bread there we go and you could do any design you want if you do not have a bread lame uh, you could use a pair of scissors as well you need an ascension about quarter inch deep let's put this in the oven so in the oven we go 475 with the lid on we're going to cook it with the lid on for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and cook it for a short while thereafter our 30 minutes have passed let's take a look at how our bread is doing oh I'd say it's doing pretty darn good folks okay the lid comes off and it continues to bake at this point 
It's depending on your oven and your, de and your desired level of doneness. I like mine well done. General rule, it's anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes. For me, it's typically somewhere in between that, but we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see how long this bread takes to finish cooking. All right, so I let this one go the distance. 15 minutes, and let's take a look. Beautiful, 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 folks. Look at that bread. Isn't that nice? Okay. Out it comes. Look how easy it comes out of that Dutch oven. Piping hot. Gorgeous, gorgeous loaf of bread right there, folks. Absolutely perfect. In fact, for me, I would have even let it stay an extra minute or two to get just a little bit darker. But now what we've got to do, we're going to cut into it, we're going to check it out, and of course we're going to do the taste test. But before we do so, folks, we have to patiently wait because this bread is still forming. It's going to start making crackling noises because the bread is still forming, the crust is forming. You need to resist the temptation to cut it. Let it sit minimum 15 minutes, but I like to let it sit at least a half an hour. That's what we're going to do today, and then we'll cut into this and take a look at it. In fact, let's take a look at the bottom. The bottom is cooked to perfection. Nice and dark, absolutely perfect. This is going to be an amazing loaf of bread. Let's let it rest for 30 minutes. I have been patiently waiting, folks, to cut into this absolute beautiful bread right here. Okay, let's take our knife. I'm going to cut it right up the middle. Oh, beautiful crunch to that crust, folks. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful, full of little air pockets right there. And look at this crust. Look at the crust. We've got a beautiful thick crust, a beautiful crumb, some nice spring to it. You know what I can't wait for, folks? The taste test. I got to cut into a piece of this right away. Oh boy, my favorite part, folks, the taste test. And I'm not sure how it looked with the lighting back there, but there you go. You can take a close look at this bread right there, folks. Absolutely beautiful. And for me, I love the crust. Nice, thick, crunchy crust. That's what I really like. You know what else I like? I like the end piece. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to cut. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at all throughout this bread, folks. We got beautiful, beautiful air pockets. And that's the piece I like the best right there. Normally, I like to put a little bit of olive oil on my bread, but we're going to take it just as is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still nice and warm. I let it sit for about 45 minutes. Amazing bread, folks. The sourdough, a little bit of whole wheat, and you can taste the rye as well. That, to me, is the perfect country harvest bread right there. You saw how easy it was. Three simple steps, folks. Very little effort. Amazing bread. That's all it takes. You can do it. Anyone can do it. It's that easy. Mm. And so tasty. My goodness. What a combination of flowers and flavor. All I can say, folks, is I really hope you give this recipe a try and enjoy this bread. I'm going to enjoy it tonight with Laura. We're going to have it at the dinner table. And wherever you're tuning from, I want to say thank you for spending time in the kitchen with me today. And as always, until next time, bon appetito. The ends are the best part. <laughs>